Okay, good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, depending on where you are. Um, welcome to the third uh, OpenMed webinar. We are in the middle of uh, module three of the OpenMed course, uh, we are the, which is focusing on OER and uh, how to use uh, open content and open resources in your teaching. And uh, as for the first two modules, we are holding this webinar to hear from an expert in this field to enrich a bit the content of the modules and to get some uh, let's say some ideas and some experience from the ground and from the research side in this case we have the luxury of having with us Bea de los Arcos from the Open University which as most of you will know is probably one, well, it is one of the leading research institutions in the field of uh, open education and open educational resources, I would say, in Europe and beyond. So I, I'm, I'm really pleased to have Bea with us. Uh, she will introduce uh, her uh, research work, so I won't go into detail, a research group, the OER Hub. So just a couple of uh, housekeeping rules, uh, please, uh, uh, if you have comments or questions, use the chat and we will try to pick them uh, in specific moments during the, during the, the talk. And uh, Bea, please feel free to stop whenever you want uh, to give the floor for some questions or if you want, if you have questions for the audience, as you know, we have now 26 participants uh, and they are increasing and typically uh, they, they are supposed to be uh, learners from the Open Med course, meaning higher education teachers uh, from uh, the South Mediterranean. But uh, we have also somebody from Florida, I saw before. So the event is open uh, to, to everybody. So it's, uh, we actually we don't really know who is the, out there, but most of the, of the participants are, are or should be from the Open Med crowd. Uh, the idea is to, to have some 40 minutes more or less presentation and then to have some time at the end for, uh, for debate, for questions and for uh, going more in depth on, uh, on some um, specific points. We won't be able to see Bea, Bea, in fact her camera has a problem, so we will just hear her voice, I will disappear, so you don't think it's me talking. And uh, so I give the floor to Bea and I thank her very much already for her participation. The floor is yours, Bea. Okay, um, thank you very much, and, and apologies, uh, my, my camera is not working properly. Um, um, thank, thank you all for coming, it's, um, it's, it's been great, I was delighted really to get this, this invite to, to come and talk to you. Um, and the first thing I, I, I thought um, um, was that I would like to tell you not exactly 1001 tales of open, because we probably don't have um, you know, we don't have as as as, as much time as, as I would have liked. Um, but um, in a way, to invite you all to hear the different stories of 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 open that I that, that I've encountered over the last few years, but also to invite you all to tell your your story and to keep um, you know so that the number of stories of open keeps keeps growing. Um, as Fabio said, feel free to, to put your comments on, on, on the chat. Um, I'll try not to speak too fast, uh, but if at some stage, you know, you have any questions or you haven't understood anything I've, I've said, just, you know, write something on the chat. And um, if I don't pick it up, hopefully Fabio will. Um, so the first thing I wanted to say to you, uh, just to give you a little bit of feed feedback on the kind of work that that we do. So I am a researcher on the Open Education Research Hub, and um, the Open so the OER Hub is is a, is an umbrella project. We started in 2013 with a grant from the Hewlett Foundation uh, to um, research the impact of uh, using open educational resources on, on teaching and, and learning. And since then we've been, um, we kind of branched out once once the research grant um, ended. And uh, so we, we use ourselves as, as an umbrella project and under this umbrella we bring in different projects. So the, 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 the ones we have there are the projects that we are working on at the moment. So we've got, we are part of the OER world map, um, we've got a project on UK open textbooks um, uh, trying to evaluate uh, whether the adoption models for op 
open textbooks in the States where the, we can actually adopt them over here in the UK and, um, and the rest of Europe. Um, I also lead the GoGN, you've probably heard about it, is the Global OER Graduate Network, a network of PhD students around the world who are doing their, their uh, research on an aspect of, of open education. Um, we also work with BizMOOC, and that's to do with MOOCs for the world of business. And uh, one of my colleagues is working on UFAS, and that is Models for Online, Open, Flexible, and Technology-Enhanced Higher Education. So I haven't given you all the links, but if you Google them, if you have an interest, um, go ahead to find out more about, about all these projects. Um, but I said to you this was going to be about about stories, and um, I thought I would start by telling you my story. So, uh, once upon a time, there you have myself. Uh, um, I've never been, well, I, I haven't been a researcher all my life, to be honest. So, that's why I thought I would, I would tell you my story first. I was, so I'm Spanish and uh, I started my my career really teaching Spanish, and yes, I'm in Rome there. Uh, <laughs> I was at a conference there a couple of years ago. So, but as I said, like I started my I started life uh, my working life as as a teacher. I used to teach Spanish, and I started working um, as a tutor for the Open University many years ago. Um, and I would do what any other educator does. So you're responsible, you have a class, you're responsible for your students and you want to um, teach, teach them as best you can and you want them to learn as best as best they can. So um, I used to create my own materials for, for class and I would use, I would create those materials based uh, on either ideas that I found on the internet or ideas that I found from different textbooks or uh, the materials that we got from from the open university. So my whole story of open started when I was asked one day, well, how would you like to share your resources? So how would you like all these teaching materials that you create? How would you like to share them? And I said, well, sure, I have no problem sharing, and that's that's absolutely fine. Um, so they introduced me to this to, to Laura. So it was an initiative at the Department of Languages here at the Open University. Um, and it was very much about creating a repository of um, materials that anyone could use for teaching languages. So not necessarily only Spanish, but it was Spanish, French, German, Chinese, Welsh, a whole lot of um, the whole um, languages that, that, that we used to teach in the Department of, of Languages. Um, so they said to me, you know, this when if you put your resources in, in this repository, it's not only about sharing with your colleagues or sharing with your students in the Open University. Uh, you actually have the choice of um, sharing with the whole world because we're gonna put this we're gonna put this um online. And um that's when I said, Okay, fine, that's 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 I have no problem with that, but that's when I I have to start learning about Creative Commons uh, because it was about, um, you know, it was about um, not only um, being happy to share, which I was, I was very willing to, to share my materials, but I, in a way I had to, um, I had to decide like how to share my materials, who I wanted to share them with, with and especially um, what I wanted other people to do with me, my, my, my materials, which is what you, you already seen this on, on your course, so you know about Creative Commons and you, you have seen this, this slide before, um, where I think it was probably, I know you've seen it during the course and I, I know probably Cable brought it up um, at the last uh, webinar. And it's this idea, um, one of the thing, one of the, the first things that I, that I have to learn is in the sense that yes, you create your materials, you own the copyright to those materials, um, but if you want to share, and if you want to share openly, and if you want
Oops. Sorry, Bea. I think you should switch on your mic again. You need. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Sorry. Okay. So. Just um, go ahead. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Um, so what I was saying to you, it's like it's this idea. So when you share, um, um, it's you need to. It's a way of telling people using a Creative Commons license is about telling people how you want your how you want them to use your your materials and um, um, you have to be in a way kind of aware that if you release your materials under a non derivative um, license and then nobody can actually change your materials there's actually no point in actually putting them putting them out there they're, they're not open so it's this idea that it, it is open a resource is going to be open it's open if you allow others to to actually uh, modify uh, changes um, grow you know grow it so so um, that it, it becomes something um, you know you let go of what you of what your resource is and it becomes something else um, so the next story is um, um, it's it's a different stories of people that have been adapting resources, reusing resources, all because these resources are are open. So apart from my story, the second story I would like to tell you is the story of um, Andy, and Andy is a teacher of. Uh, statistics in the states. He teaches statistics in a school called uh, Byron High in the United States, and um, he puts all his curriculum online. So um, all his statistics course um, doesn't doesn't live in it. It's not a textbook. It's not it's not in a sense physical. It actually lives online, and it's uh, released on the a CC by SA license. So one of the things that he he explains to his um, his students and uh, these are not okay. This is in a school context, so they are not. Um, I'm not necessarily talking about students in 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 a university, but but in a school. These are secondary school students. But one of the things he does with them is that he explains to them what is the difference between. Um, between copyright and and Creative Commons, so he says he says to them, well, you know, if um, there are lots of um, textbooks out there about statistics, but uh, because they are copyrighted, we can't really do anything with with them. While if you have something with a Creative Commons license, it means that in this case, um, his his material is under a share like license you, you 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 can change it and it's important because it's it's not very often that uh, teachers explain this difference to to their students we all know about copyrights um, and you know you kind of teach your your students or they know already well if it's got copyright it's kind of illegal to do anything with it um, but um, you know, Creative Commons gives you the freedom to 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 use that copyrighted material, and this this is what he explains. And um, so he says this course has been fully developed from scratch without copyright restrictions, and is released free on the web for many teacher, for any teacher, sorry, or a student to use and remix. And he highlights. So this is one of the points that I, I like to highlight. It says, as a result, it belongs to the class and it belongs to the world. So this is not something that um, he says, well, I created this material and it belongs to me. No, it's, you know, I put it out there. It belongs to the class and it belongs to the world because it's it's out there for everyone to, to reuse. Um, and then he says, this also means that you're encouraged and expected to contribute to its development and improvement. And in fact, one of the things that he he does is that he asks his students to as an assessment so part of of the work that the that the students do um, um to get assessed is you know he tells them you know what you have to improve the course so the course is that there um it, it's it has a um, creative common license we can work on it so you're gonna work and you're gonna make it. You're gonna make it uh, better. So it's again one of this. It's one of the things that uh, being open and being out there it, it allows you to do. 
as in, in a way, you kind of stop thinking in a traditional way, as in, I am the teacher and this is the way I teach and I give you the knowledge and you receive the knowledge if you're my students. No, it's a way of kind of working um, more openly and, and um, getting your students to to actually create the knowledge as 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 well as uh, as you as well as you being there to to guide them. Um, so the, the another story and 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 you'll see how um, what we're gonna do what I'm gonna do is just jump from from story to from story to 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 story. Um, um, this is also um, one of the initiatives that we worked on um, as part of the OER hub and uh, it's a citizen science program in uh, Maine, in Portland, in, in, again in the United States and uh, it's called Vital Science. It's an initiative by the Gulf of Maine Research Institute and um, I think it's absolutely brilliant and it's brilliant because um, what they had is so um, it's a way they, they've, managed, they, they, they've managed to create a community that involves teachers, scientists and, and again school children and again you know much bigger the, the, uh, the, the general public if you want to put it that way. So um, it all started because it, you know in, in Maine um, the scientists wanted to um, you know, track what was the extent of any invas invasive species. So I'm talking about uh, insects and creepy crawlies and uh, any kind of uh, plants or like seaweed, any, any species that wasn't really native to, to Maine. The scientists wanted to actually see how far have these species got gone into, into, into Maine. And um, the thing is that, you know, they, they could but they couldn't possibly do it themselves, and so they um, they talked to the to school teachers in the area, and they said, well, you know, what it is, what what why why can we not together work together, talk to each other, see what um, what would be good for the students, what what how can the students help us, and how can we help the students? And so vital science really grew out of 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 these conversations, and it's it's a genius program, I think. The way it works is. Um, um, the uh, scientists post a mission online, so um, missions could be like, um, you know, can you find this particular species in, 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 in your area? And uh, so the kids go out with the teachers and uh, um, they go looking for that species and they, they have all this, um, they, you know, they've got all the information, they've got the photographs, they, ha they, they have, so what they're doing is that checking um, within their area if, if this, say, a particular plant or a particular insect is, is around. So they post all those observations on online, uh, so they post photographs, they post uh, where it is that it was found, so the exact location and, and the description of, of this particular species, and um, so all that conversation, all all those posts are live, are open, available, openly available online. Then the the scientists, the real scientists from the research institute, come in and they they actually validate this information as in yes, you're right, or um, or no, maybe you should go back and 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 check again. So again, what you what you did, and then the the children, the, the students find it really really motivating because it's not just. Uh, being inside the classroom and doing your textbook and looking at photographs is actually going out um, and and doing real science because this is not even you know something that you do um, as a, you know um, that you're not that you're not faking it you're actually helping the scientists in in your area to to uh, trace all these this, this um, invasive species so. Um, again, uh, we worked with some of the, the, the teachers that, that were using this this uh, this program, and uh, I asked them because we were interested in saying how you know how how is it that the fact that I use that you're using an, an open initiative, an open an open program, um, does that change the way you think about you the way you think about teaching? And uh, this particular teacher. Um, uh, says says to me, well, you know what? It I it hasn't really changed my teaching that much. But uh, what's happened is that it's made my teaching that much richer. 
Okay, so she she hasn't changed the, the way she thinks about teaching, but her teaching is that much richer because it allows me to provide my students with some kind of outside real world activity. So again, she's a science teacher. Um, it's it's about the kids being real scientists and they they go online and they they get to see their their work published and then. Um, the, the people from the research institute come back and they, they comment on their stuff and you know the, the children are going oh wow fantastic and and then they get into it so it's in a way you kind of um, there's two things that you're doing you you the kids the children are, are doing this this for real they're doing real science uh, they're posting all this stuff online openly for others to see so at the same time they're creating this community which is a community um, that kind of mixes the, the students and the teachers and the scientists and then and then uh, the normal public because this is something that is available for for everyone. You could actually go in and participate if if, if you wanted or have a similar um, a similar um, initiative in in your regions. Uh, so again, it's this idea about what the teacher says is you know I can provide real world opportunities in my classroom at low expense. And um, it might not be this idea of, of low expense might not be a priority for for some of you, but it it actually you know it is something that that for for many people is 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 something that they have to bear in mind because there, there isn't a lot of um, people out there with with a lot of money to spend on on education. And I'm talking about teachers. I'm talking about um, um, you know whether it is school or in higher education. So one of the things that we researched um, with the, the OER hub is uh, um, this idea that if you use open educational resources then uh, you're saving money and um, so we asked the students and we asked educators in, in, in universities so we've moved from the school context uh, we have now moved to to um, the university so it's you know it, it this was a, a very simple question in the sense that it's all about perceptions and we, we we didn't want to know exactly how much money you're saving but is this so what do you think do students save money uh, if when, when you're using open educational resources and uh, you can see we we asked educators and we asked former learners and you know the yes is, is the blue column are saying yes uh, we do save, we do save money, we think we, we save money. Um, and uh, one of the ways uh, students, so we help students save money is, um, um, you've, you've heard before, is the, um, the idea of, of using open textbooks. And um, it's an idea that originated in the United States because they have a huge problem over there. Um, like textbooks are horrifically expensive, you know, and that has an impact on um, it's it's good. It has an impact uh, not only on the finances of the students, as in how much money you have, but also has a huge impact on on um, you know the the academic performance of of the students. Uh, um, but I don't want to bring you exactly. Um, you know, so this is this is a quote because I was doing some research uh, um, recently about um, students in Ireland. So not not we moving from from the US to the UK and, and and to Ireland and and this is a student and she's saying, well, you know, some of the course textbooks can be over 50, 50 euro and I can't afford them. Um, and you know, I'd rather borrow from friends or I'd, I'd rather use photocopies and spend. Uh, so much money on a book that I will only be using one semester. So it's, I think it's it's one of these things that, yes, you use a textbook or you buy a textbook. It, it is very expensive and then it ends up. Uh, uh, you you use one chapter or two chapters. You use it once uh, and and that's it. But I don't want to bring you. Um, what I want to do is not bring you, not bring this idea of open textbooks, not bring you the story of open textbooks as as um, saving money because you know it depends it varies a lot uh, from country to country how much how much it is that you uh, that the students spend on on textbooks but what i would like to highlight is this idea of um, 
uh, what you can do uh, with an open textbook because exactly it's it's open um, and I go back again to the same idea maybe I should have started by saying you know what is an open textbook so again it's the same the same idea um, a, a textbook is, is open if you know it's released uh, uh, freely under a CC license that allows uh, modification, that allows you to adapt it. Um, you know, think about it yourself. How many times have you prepared your class and you have you gone to look for inspiration somewhere else and decided to say, you decided, yes, this is good, I can use this, uh, but I'm going to change it because I need to adapt it to, to the needs of, of, of my students. So, um, so that's exactly what you can do with, a, with an open textbook. And in this case, this example is um, a textbook that's uh, an open textbook that was, uh, this is the original one. So it was called Collaborative Statistics. So again, you know, it's about teaching statistics. It was written by, um, it, like these two authors, Barbara Lofsky and Susan Dean, and uh, so somebody grabbed this textbook and said, yes, this is great. I can use this textbook with my students. But hey, um, you know, it's about statistics, but my course uses Excel. And this book is, is actually based, you know, all the examples um, and it, it makes reference to it. It's, it's about using a, a, like a different, uh, a different uh, program. And so what they did is they, they, they got this book and they changed it. They changed all the the examples and they made them relevant to what to the, the the course that they were teaching which which was to do with with excel so it's something very simple as as you know grabbing the examples and changing them and, and using excel um so see how the list of uh, the list of authors now has grown because this is can this has been a collaborative effort and i think one that's one of the things that that openness also um encourages to do and helps you to do is this idea you know that you can collaborate with with other educators um, on 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 a common project and 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 make the most of, of what it is that you want to that you want to create um i can give you another example i can give you another story um this is particularly interesting i think um and in a way it relates to andy's story so um, what we have here is a group of um, graduate students at, at uh, Byron Young University and uh, um, they were studying in, in, uh, instructional design. They, they wanted, they, their, their course was about project management for instructional designers, but they couldn't find a text that, that actually they, they could use. They found this, this other text, which was uh, project management for uh, uh, for for a, like a different context, not necessarily instructional design. So I forget exactly what context it was. But what they did is uh, they got this existing open textbook, uh, which was about project management, and they revised it. So again, it was an open textbook, so with a CC license allowing for adaptation. So they actually changed it, they modified it, they revised it, and they took out. Um, the examples it, the, it, the, the original book had about international business and they replaced those examples with with examples of instructional design and they replaced copyrighted images uh, with uh, creative common, common images and they, they created videos and they embedded videos in the online version of the book and they created interactive assessments and and then they released the book as what you have there is like project management for instructional designers, and um, um, and then it it so that was see this is the interesting thing it's it, it, it this book has continued um, the students have continued to actually um, again improve it and 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 grow it and make it a, a better resort and it did all this as course assignments so. Um, so again, this is not, while the other textbook I showed, it was a group of, of educators, a group of teachers getting together to change the book. In this case, what you have is the students. So it's like Andy's example in, in school is, um, it's um, the course assignment for the students was actually to um, create a better 
to create a better a better textbook and uh, so it's giving you all these possibilities the fact that it's open um, is giving you all these possibilities again to to get your students to create knowledge and and uh, you know to work on collaboration and and um, um, and you know work much much better that much better that way um how are you doing time wise okay that's fine uh I'll give you another example, and this is again, we move, this is more uh, related to MOOC. So, this is another story, another tale, and this is part of the BIS MOOC project that we are working on. So, uh, BIS MOOC, um, um, one of the project deliverables is to create three pilot MOOCs about, uh, you know, three different MOOCs. For, in this case, um, BIS MOOC 1. Um, is about trying to help um, a wide range of people so you could be a student or you could be already at work and wanted to, to improve it's it's about helping people how to use MOOCs um, to, to learn how to use MOOCs and how to use um, other online resources to um, you know to, to help the professional to, to help their professional development and uh, the thing about this this um, this course, this MOOC, is that uh, for starters, it was created on a free platform. So it's created on Open Learn Create, which is the Open University's uh, uh, free platform for anyone and everyone to to create a course. So you you probably know about Open Learn already. So Open Learn is is where you you can access um, courses uh, created by the Open University. Um, what you have with Open Learn Create is is the platform. It's a free platform that anyone can 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 use to create a course. So there you go. Well, that's that's already it's Moodle based, and in this case, you know, it's it it saves you the time and the money and saying where the hell am I gonna put my this course that I that I want to create and. Um, uh, the other thing about so one, it's on a free platform, very easy to use because it's Moodle based, and you need very little knowledge really to find your way around. But also, um, it has been put together using, um, I think, ninety-five percent of the content of this MOOC, and it goes through um, where to find MOOCs and how to use MOOCs and how to assess the quality of a MOOC and how to work on your digital skills and how to improve. Um, you know your your online profile. All the all that content, the content of the course um, has ninety five percent of the content is is um, is um, content that has been reused from 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 other resources. So content that was already there that we took and we customized again because it has it has um, it was released in an open license allowing adaptation. Um, we did exactly the same thing. Uh, with the Explorer course, and this is for another European project, um, um, and um, it again we have to create a course um, to teach people how to reuse open educational resources. Uh, so how to find OER, how to be able to evaluate them. You know, we we taught them about licenses. The usual, like a course very similar to the one that that you guys are doing. Uh, but again, it's the same situation as the BizMOOC course. We um, use the platform with the peer-to-peer -peer university, P2PU, which again is, is, uh, um, is, is available for, for free. Um, and, and then again, like a high percentage of the content uh, we did not create from scratch. This is not Sweden, it needs to reinvent the wheel. There are wonderful resources out there already. So what we did is reused, um, again, say 90% of, of, um, of the content, um, you know, that was already, that was already out there. And then again, I see, it's like, I can't, I can't really emphasize it enough. It's about openness for me. It's so much about sharing. It's about telling your story, about putting your work out there, but putting it out there in such a way that other people can actually use it, reuse it, and especially change it. And uh, um, one of the things I want us to to um, to um, 
prove to you and see whether you agree or not or not with me. It's this idea um, again, you know, as in how much do we share? How much? How much do we use the internet? How much do we share? How much do we give back? And um, you have probably, or maybe you haven't, but. Um, and there's the, the discussion is out there as in if we're going to talk about a, a divide between the global north and the global south, you know, and especially say English speaking countries and, and countries that do not have English as their first language, there's this accusation to some extent that, you know, if you if you are from the global north, so if you are from a, an English speaking country, and what you do is you create resources. While if you are in the global south, and, and you know you don't speak English, what you do is you you consume. You just consume, consume, consume. So it's this kind of this uh, the the dichotomy between um, the divide between consumers and and creators. And uh, um, so I did a piece of research a couple of years ago. Well, I I wanted to really look at this um, at this divide. Is it really? Is that really the case? I mean, we do know that uh, you know the internet is is very much dominated by by English. But in terms of using open educational resources, then what's going on? What's the story there? And um, so, oops. Oh, I lost my, t oh, there, there should be a, anyway, this, there, was, <laughs> there was a table here. I don't know why it's gone. That's very disappointing. Anyway, what that uh, that table shows um, is uh, in terms of research, and if you go to, um, what's happening? Oh, kind of. Oh, thank you, Fabio. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. There, there it is. Okay, one down. Okay, there you see it. Uh, thank you. That's that's great. Thank you so much, Fabio. So, we what I did is so one of the things that we did at the hub was we we had a large survey uh, with um, thousands of responses where we asked. Um, it's it's actually a massive survey asking people lots of questions, and we got answers from uh, responses from from the four corners of of the world. So I I got that data set, which of like, you know by the way is available on, on Figshare, and um, you can use it uh, to your heart's content. But what I did is I divided those responses, uh, the responses to countries that came from the global south and and countries that came came from from the global north, and just purely just to see. You know, in terms of um, what it is that they did with open educational resources, was there a huge difference? And uh, so you go. So if we start from the bottom, for instance, we ask them. You know, I have adapted open educational resources to fit my needs, and see how. Again, it's a, it's a it's a very small difference, as in seventy six percent and eight percent. Um, very much the same, even closer, closer differences, like I have created open educational resources for the study and teaching. Um, um, have you created resources and published them on, on, uh, with, with, with an open license? You see how, um, again, it's not, the percentages are not huge, as in there isn't a huge number of people creating uh, materials and sharing them online with a, with a CC license. It doesn't matter if you're in the south or in the north. Um, you know, the percentages go um, go low for both for both groups in a sense that, yes, okay, in the, if you're in the north, maybe you share a little bit more. But they, see, the, the differences are not are not huge. They're actually, you know, yes, they, 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 they are a little bit if you're in the north, you you would be a little bit higher in terms of sharing more, in terms of adapting more, instead of creating more, um, in terms of adding a resource to a repository, for instance. Um, but as you can see, the differences are not huge, so you couldn't uh, properly speak of 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 a divide. And then if you start thinking about you know the different barriers to to actually using open educational resources in, in, in the global south, for instance, like access to, to the internet, then you see how this data 
again, you know, makes uh, makes more sense. Um, so to finish, uh, uh, what what I would like to, I mean, I can I can go on and and uh, this idea. Give <laughs> give me the story. Uh, it's about telling your story. Okay. Um, in a way, as I was saying to you in in, in the beginning, um, um, you know, the title of this presentation, um, it's about telling stories, but the title of the presentation is inspired by by one of my favorite books, which is the Arabian Nights, so the the one thousand and one tales. Um, and do you know what the story was? Uh, you know, you know, it was about Sherizad, and she marries mar mar marries the king, and 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 she starts a story. Um, you know, the king has unfortunately has this this idea of, uh, you know, he's in the habit of of killing his wives. Um, you know, the 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 morning after after the wedding. So, but Sherizad, what she does is she she starts telling him a, a tale. She starts telling him a story. Um, on their wedding night, but she doesn't finish it. Um, so he has this curious about what's the end of the story, and he has to wait for the for the the following night, the next the next night, uh, uh, where she finishes that story, but it starts a new one, and that goes on and on. So she, um, you know, the, the, it goes on for for one thousand and and one nights. But um, the point here is not necessarily. Um, obviously, I mean, I'm, 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 it's not about executing anyone, right? But it's about um, um, open educational resources. It's it's about um, it's using open educational resources. It's, it's about adapting open educational resources. It's about, but it's so much more about telling telling your story, telling uh, the world um, what it is that you have done. So you you also do wonderful work. So you. We need to share it more. We have a responsibility to share that 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 work, share that work with a with a with a Creative Commons license, and then tell everybody what it is that that you've you've done. And if you use resources by somebody else, then again tell the story of how how you have used these resources, how you have adapted your your resources, what the impact that, that is having on 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 your students. Um, and again, uh, I mean, I speak for myself. Uh, as I said to you, I'm I'm Spanish. I, I live in in the UK and I work uh, primarily in English. But I do feel I have a certain responsibility to to also share what I do in in Spanish. What I is something that I haven't done that much. I never thought about it. But you know, think about it. Think about what it is that you do. Um, um, in your own language that has nothing to do with English and, and you know, stand up for yourself in that sense and, and share what you do and share it in, in your own language. Um, so that's all, that's all I wanted to say. I don't know if there are any questions or any comments. Or, um, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bea. A virtual clap for you. I think uh, you... you, you, you you address the issue from a very interesting perspective, in fact, the one of uh, using stories and uh, using, I would say, also positive narratives and changing narratives, uh, change-making narratives in order to, let's say, to convince no, and to bring forward a bit the idea. One thing we, I don't know if you were following the a bit the, the, the chat, but uh, one, the, the issue about the, the, the expensive textbooks, which uh, is a problem in the, in the Mediterranean region, not, I think, as much as in the US, but still it is a problem, as it is becoming a problem in many European countries, is an issue about, uh, and that, that would be my, my first question for you. Uh, but before the question, I'm asking, uh, since we're talking about telling your story, if some of you want the microphone to tell your story or to ask a question, just raise your hand in the by clicking on the button, clicking the button on the top of the screen, and I will give you the, the microphone. My question has to do with convincing, maybe through a story, the decision makers, because in the, the decision makers that, that, that should take some decisions about, for example, uh, using uh, open textbooks, uh, you know, which goes a bit against the establishment of publishers and, and the, the usual way of doing things. Or uh, as we have seen, for example, we are, uh, we are working in, especially in Morocco, 
with uh, some uh, governmental and university and, and universities in order to, to push for a political, uh, I would say, adoption or at least a political push towards open education. And this is also to do with stories. I mean, stories are useful. I totally agree with you uh, in order to explain how change can happen much more than, uh, you know, raw data or, or big, uh, big theoretical discourses. So my question is, how do you think we, uh, we, let's say, our partners, if you were a professor convinced about OER and openness in, a, in typically a large university in the south of the Mediterranean, and you have to convince your people, your boss, your colleagues, uh, which stories would you use? Which points would you use? Because you made many points, but which would be your couple of... Uh, uh, let's say leverages that you would use. Um, it's a very good question, and um, again, it's very much about talking to. You'll see how very often you end up talking to these skeptics. Um, the one thing, um, the stories you have to tell, um, um, are stories not necessarily of um, of uh, how you did things. But it's the story, it's very important to tell the end of the story. So what happens in the end? Um, so, so to make it, um, you know, just not to go around it in, in, in a long way, it's very much about showing the impact. Um, so when we were talking to, or we were working with, um, with teachers, and one of the questions, we, the question I was asking them all the time, I said, yes, I can tell you the story, but tell me, uh, what has changed? So what has been the difference between what you were doing before and and what you're doing now and what has been the impact? So what has happened because you did X, Y, Z, or what has happened because you started using open educational resources? Um, because you can tell the story, and and the stories are there whether you're using um, numbers in your research or whether you're just using qualitative research. Um, um, but it you need to support if you're talking to somebody, and in this case, is like policymakers or the the person who's, who's in charge of actually making a decision. Um, your story has to be based in, um, around um, impact. So this is how I've done it, and this is what 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 has happened. This this is you know how my students reacted, as in this is how my students improved, or this is how I improved as a as a teacher. Or the, I, you know it's 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 very much that that story of of impact, if you know what I mean. It's not an easy one though, uh, but you know, even if you, like, but you know, even if you, yeah, it's impact. Yeah. yeah. It's impact. Okay, so you mean focusing on the impact, whether it is, uh, let's say, cost saving, depending on the context, of course, I guess, uh, but something that starting from the impact and not so much from the, from the process, you mean the process will come, and the, the full story is uh, let's say if you had a, you you must show an impact. If I understand yes, exactly, right. it's, it, you have to show the impact. If you, it's about if you it's not this okay. How can I explain this? You're telling your story, but you have to get to the end of the story. So the end of the story is always the climax. It's always the most important bit. So. That end of the story has to be the, the impact um, of um, you know what happens when you use open educational resources. Um, the process will happen anyway in the sense that you know in order to actually get to your impact, you must have told the, the process before. But the what is going to help um, uh, those who want who have the power to make the decision about using OER or adopting OER. It's, it's that end of the story, as in 
was the did they live happily ever after or and uh, you know that kind of that kind of impact okay i i'm picking up another well more a comment maybe you want to elaborate on this uh, by sandra she from Lebanon, she says that since we started using OER as much as possible in some of our courses in Notre Dame University in Lebanon, we have noticed that the students were happy to have material available with no extra cost. And I know that the OER Hub has done uh, a lot of research on uh, actually the impact of, uh, of using OER on students' uh, experience, on the learning experience. This is a uh, pretty unique of what uh, of, of your research center so uh, this is uh, you can you you can confirm this at least I, I quote you all the time when i have to convince somebody that oer is good for students we we can i can yes uh, that's very true so so when we said the research that we that we did with with the help um was very much one of them. Uh, so it was hypothesis-based research. So we had a set of hypotheses, and we wanted to analyze whether the hypothesis was was actually true or or not. And one of the most important hypotheses we had was this idea that uh, when you when students use open educational resources, um, that leads to increased uh, satisfaction with the learning experience and and increased academic performance. So. Um, it is true that um, it, it's not what we have found is that yes, um, um, using open educational resources helps uh, helps co um, uh, collaboration in the class and it helps feelings of uh, uh, satisfaction and feelings of uh, self confidence and, and all that kind of all that kind of. Um, um, personal space and what you see how in terms of saying uh, in terms of academic outcomes what we find is not necessarily that oh, using open educational resources is better for you in terms of outcomes as in in terms of um, um, you know having better uh, scores in your exams and your assessments at, at the end of, of the year but what we find is that uh, you are not going to get more results. So in that sense, like using um, open education resources is as good as, you know, using a resource that does not open. Well, which is already which is already something important considering the the benefits for for the whole for the whole system. Yeah, thank you. Uh, another question, a question by Rema Re, Rima. Rima. How does the competitive uh -huh, that's interesting. Um that's very interesting. <laughs> um I don't it's that's very interesting. The university that chooses to put itself out there, um always you know the way you put yourself out there as a university is you put yourself out there because you want to attract more students right um so it depends very much on um on on the 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 image that uh, that you want to that you want to tell the world so the, your story is always going to be from the point of view of, of a university i'm thinking you want to put out there yeah, like a story of, of, of success. You, you've got universities like um, like us, like the Open University, who uh, put their materials, like good quality materials out there because we are telling people, you know, this is an example of the materials that, that, that you will encounter if you come and study with us. And it's very much exactly the same thing that the University of Edinburgh is, is doing, for, for instance. So by showing people what it is that you do inside, uh, it's just telling them, you know, come and work with us or come and study with us uh, because we can do wonderful things together. So this idea of sharing is it's very much about putting yourself out there as in uh, this open window to the world, primarily to, to attract students. And 
there will be concerns, of course. Uh, you know, there'll be concerns about uh, how that, it, again, going back to, to the same idea, is this, this story has to be a positive story. Nobody wants to put a story out there when it says, like, you know, uh, most of our students are unhappy with their lecturers or are unhappy with the universities. So, um, it's it's any university out there in in it's if you think about how competitive um, higher education is at the moment in the sense that you are competing for for students, um, this idea of putting yourself out there, uh, you're always gonna go for your best story, uh, because that's why that's the reason you, uh, that's how you're gonna attract the students to come and study with you and probably you know survive as a university, which is serious enough. Um. Absolutely, I see. I see some people are typing. Yeah, it's uh, as Rima is saying. It uh, must be a win-win situation and must be presented in a in a positive way, but by noting the concerns. I would say, yeah. Uh, I see. I saw Khalid was typing a lot. Yes, and still typing. Khalid must be typing. Uh, Khalid is our uh, facilitator from Kadia Yad University. Ooh. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's it's very it's 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 going to vary an awful lot. It's like um it's it's it goes yeah. There's different perspectives are going to bring different strategies. Uh, so um there's I don't think there's anything I can add to to that in the sense that you know you we're talking about different contexts and. Um, you know, concerns of universities over here may be completely different from, from public or private universities anywhere else in, in the world. Um, and one of the things that we ask to do all the time is like, and it's, in, again, one of the concerns over here is, is about saving money. So how can you save money in terms of producing courses, for instance? Um, so that's going to be our strategy as well. Uh, um, there's also, and this is again my opinion, so I'm, I'm not saying this is the opinion of the European University, so my opinion is like there's this move towards offering um, more and more accreditation um, as, um, you know, in, in the big MOOC platforms like Coursera or like, like Future Learn, um, because of this idea that you're reaching like more, like you need you're reaching masses and, and masses of, of, of people. Um, so, you know, in, in a way, uh, but then you have to be very careful about um, how, the, how the assessment works and what's the experience that these learners are, um, um, are having and, and how do you actually support the experience these learners are having. So, again, it's a very different strategy, um, you know, with different concerns. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, uh, it's. Uh, I totally agree. I mean, it's a, it's a complicated thing, especially because uh, open education, as as Khalid was was hinting to, is a, is a necessity in countries where massification is really an issue. I mean, uh, we we reached a certain degree of matu of maturity, and uh, with our demographics in Europe, we don't see this. But the stories that we heard about the numbers of students in, in some courses in big universities in the Mediterranean region is impressive. So it's like you would need a MOOC only for your students and that would already be enough. So it's not really, yeah. you know, it's not really a MOOC to attract students from all over the world. It's an urgent solution for the students of your own university. So it is a, it is another kind of open education. In fact, it's, a, it's, a, it's opening, opening also, of course, opening it to the world, but it's the first concern, obviously, is, uh, is about your students. So it's a different layer also. And again, it's different for public and, and, uh, and private institutions. So it's, 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 it's complicated, absolutely. But uh, I think uh, 
by, tell, by telling stories, we should, uh, we should be able to, to overcome that. Uh, dear all, we reached, uh, we reached uh, the, the time limit, uh, roughly, so um, unless there are any uh, other burning questions, by the way, Bea uh, is uh, quite active on Twitter and also quite responsive, so I think uh, you can see there the, the tweet, uh, well, her email, if you want to write her an email directly, and, uh, and the, the, the account of the OER Hub, uh, and I mean, Please have a look at the, at the OER Hub uh, documents uh, and reports repository. It's really, I think, one of the most interesting places to go for, for uh, original reports and your own reports on, uh, on OER from different perspectives. As you, as you have heard a bit what, what they are doing. Uh, in, I mean, they're looking at the thing from many different perspectives, and I think this is a, an absolute richness. So... Uh, if there are no more questions, I would leave you, Bea, the, the floor for uh, the last uh, couple of sentences, and then I will uh, just say goodbye um, to everybody. Yes, thank you. I mean, thank you all for coming, and thank you for, for having me here. Um, thank you. you know, the, do, the, the, it's so, so, so important. I just can't emphasize it enough how important it is to hear voices coming from from you know from the global south and voices other than voices speaking in english so the, um i mean i know that we are communicating now and I'm, I'm speaking english to you but you know it's so 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 important that um that the rest of the world knows what uh, what the, like what all the good stuff all the brilliant stuff that you that you guys are doing so um, you know, I'm happy to always help you with, with anything if, if you have any comments or any questions or if you need anything, you know, those are my contact details, uh, contact details as, as Fabio said. And uh, again, you know, um, don't, I mean, you might find it hard uh, because openness doesn't happen from one day to the next. Uh, but, you know, I encourage you just to keep going, to keep fighting, to keep talking to people, to keep raising awareness. Um, because it's what we are doing. It's it's a good thing. It's a good thing for for all of us and for a lot of people out there. Um, so thank you. Well, thank you very much, and uh, I repeat uh, to you the, the the same thing I told to to Lorna and uh, and uh, Cable that you know our our previous webinars. Once you are engaged with Open Med, you will find that the community is so active. That uh, you will, uh, you will, you 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 can consider yourself part of the community already, and this is uh, you will see a lot of activities coming up from there. So thank you very much for your availability. So I just uh, thanking you everybody from the, the point of view of uh, and on behalf of the Open Med project of uh, the of uh, the UNIR, uh, UNESCO chair on OER, which is partly organizing these webinars, and the webinar will be available in the next days on the Open Med uh, website. And uh, see you in a couple.